What is up guys, Thaddeus, <coughs> and so we are back today with another ASMR video. <laughs> What's up guys? <laughs> Guys, ah, ah, what is up, guys? That is here in today's video. We are going to be talking talking about five myths regarding dropshipping in 2019, and people that are looking to get into the space, um, and people that are kind of you know, if you're curious about the space, if you just figured out what the internet is or what e-commerce is, then you know this 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 is probably probably for you. Okay, so. Um, we're just gonna hop right into it so I don't waste your time and so I can go do other shit with my day. But first things first, right? Myth number one. Number one. Number one, okay? Myth number one is drop shipping only works for low priced general items, right? Now I wanted to start with this one just because I noticed a lot of the people that I see that that ask me for help, right? Or that DM me on Instagram or that just reach out to me you know, privately and are like, hey, can you take a look at my store? Or like, hey, what am I doing wrong? I'm not getting sales, all this stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll look at their website and, you know, you know, in some cases they're, they're really good, but most of the time, a lot of these people, um, you're one, you're, you're underselling your products ridiculously. Okay. So it's not even the fact that you, you may be selling like a general product. Cause you know, in some cases those stores can work again. I always advocate to go to like, to like niche down, niche down, whatever you want to call it. Um, to get specific with your, with your market, like figure out who your market is. Um, and then find like a product that has product market fit, which is a lot easier if you attack the market first rather than trying to find a random product, right? Which is why um, when people go to general products, they're usually going about it wrong because they're, they're not looking at a market first. They're just finding general products. They're like, oh, you know, everyone needs a plunger. So I'm going to sell plungers online. That's <laughs> is not um, usually what you, what you want to go um, do. When you're trying to figure out products okay so that's kind of that's 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 the first myth that i wanted to sort of bring up and um there's sort of two points to that right so there's just the fact that you're selling low ticket items and this fact that it's a general product so you know attacking point number one with low priced items guys so a lot of you guys like you're you're if you're new to e-commerce right most people start selling really cheap products okay that's not a bad thing like even even my first stores i wasn't selling super cheap products but i had like my cheapest product was probably around 12 dollars, okay um and that's that was my low end okay but i was selling a lot of stuff upper um in sort of the upper echelon of like 45 60 dollars um around there like shades um backpacks stuff like that was what i was doing with my first store in, in the men's accessories niche okay so I wasn't just low ticket, but I see a lot of these people like you're you're so s scared to ask for more money um, with your product that you end up selling selling shit for like seven dollars and you walk away with maybe one or two dollars of profit, if that even after like a shout out. But like if you're a beginner and you're trying to do paid Facebook ads, that's not going to work at a seven dollar price point when when you can only afford, you know, when when either way you only profit, you know, one or two dollars after everything's said and done. That leaves very, very, very little room for for generating sales with, with paid traffic, right? Your cost per conversion is probably not going to be that low if you're first starting out in the e-commerce space. And I think that's why some people just, they literally just dig their own grave when they're starting that off, okay? Because they're doing this. Now, a way to fix that, right, is one, raise your freaking price, like literally triple your price, okay? But again, that that it's not as easy as doing that. Well, like literally you can go and Shopify and adjust your price, but... Um, what I'm saying is like you need to have the the brand to back that up, right? Like your website needs the aesthetic to to show that perceived value to the potential client that hey, this is actually worth X amount of money, right? Your social media outlets, wherever you're driving traffic from, right? People need to come into your website already primed, like psychology wise, like thinking that you know this brand, this company is somewhat you know pricier than than competitors because you know. You're not, most of the time, to be successful dropshipping, you're not going to be price competitive. That's usually not it, okay? People go to Amazon for price competitiveness, okay? What Amazon does is, like, Amazon, you don't have a brand identity. It's really just price point, okay? Now, when you're dropshipping, it's kind of like a flip side. Like, you have you have so much room to actually craft a brand identity through social media, through your website, through everything else, that you should be capitalizing on that to actually create sort of this brand presence for yourself, okay, that actually like where people have this perceived value that, that your stuff is worth more than it actually is okay so that is myth number well actually we could talk about general items 
as well real quick but with general items guys you know, it's really just how you attack the market so when you're trying to get started dropshipping you need to figure out who you're going to market towards first like who is your market who's your niche right if you want to sell you know really cute aesthetic water bottles or something right um like some people might consider that a general item a general item i would just say is a water bottle right but you can niche that down by going to i don't know like figuring out like okay i want athletic girls that you know are like artsy or something like that right and then you can go on aliexpress and literally find water bottles that look cute and market them as you know like like for these women that are athletic that are, that are going out and doing stuff with their day and having this cute little water bottle by their side like there, there's so many ways to take a project and craft um craft this like presence around it where it can actually fit a specific you know market niche okay guys so that's myth number one which took like five freaking minutes now myth number two you only need to list products on your website to begin making sales okay this is another one just because I know there's a lot of beginners watching these videos and a lot of beginners will message me saying, hey, I finished my website, blah, 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 I'm not getting sales. It's like, yeah, you're not getting sales, you don't have traffic. Okay, you can have the best looking website in the world, okay? And if you have no traffic, if there's no eyeballs looking on your really good looking website, you're not gonna convert. You can't convert zero traffic, okay? You you physically, literally cannot, you can't do that. So. The, the issue was that most people think is like, oh, they spent all this time making this, you know, this website look really good and they spent so much time making their products, you know, make sure all their products and stuff flow on the website and their descriptions are really solid and they have all these apps and widgets, which is, which is good, right? Like you should have that, but that shouldn't be where all your focus is going. Most of your focus needs, not most, but I'd say, you know, at least 50% like should be going to, to, to marketing, figuring out how to craft, you know, these like certain content and visuals that will reflect on your brand and help drive traffic when you start doing paid ads or influencer shout outs or whatever the like it is that you're doing, you need to, you need traffic, you need eyeballs, okay guys? So that's just one that, that I feel is brought up frequently just because anyone new trying to get into this space is usually just like, I, I made a website, where's my sales? Like that, that's what Amazon does guys. On Amazon, if you list your product, right? Um, basically like, like they, they, they have all the traffic coming to their marketplace. So you list a product, obviously you need like SEO and keywords and rates a little bit different than Shopify, but that's more Amazon, right? Shopify is like you, your website is like on its own. It's on its own little Island and you need to basically what am I doing? like build a bridge over to the people and let the people come to your Island. Okay. That's my best analogy. Now, myth number three, drop shipping has terrible margins. Now, most people have terrible margins, or they say they do, because when they try drop shipping, they sell some cheap shit, um, and they walk away with one or two dollars of profit, like I just mentioned before. Or they try and sell some expensive shit, but they suck at paid ads, their you know cost per conversion, um, and all everything else that that plays into their their paid advertising makes their prices skyrocket. Right? It's just way too much. Um, that that gives you terrible margins. Now, to not have terrible margins is when you drop ship, it's it, I, I don't know if I can say it's easy. Do you have really good margins? But the process is fairly simple. So you validate that your offer sells, okay? Once you know that your offer sells and you can actually make money with that, right? Then it's where, okay, you need, you have two things. You have your back end and you have the front end. Back end wise, you go to your suppliers and you can either A, negotiate for cheaper rates because you're gonna start bringing them a lot more money, all right? So you have a little bit of leverage on them or you can ask them, hey, I wanna start ordering in bulk, blah, 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 but that, then, then that's you converting everything out of dropshipping more into like a private white label brand, okay? So th there's a back end way to do that where that'll again, give you more profit on your back end or on the front end, which is like, hey, you have terrible margins, okay, well, try increasing your price, okay? Um, Try optimizing more your Facebook ads to get to get your cost per conversion like a lot lower. Like there's a bunch of things you can do that'll improve your margins. I think people just come in with a mindset that dropshipping has like 90% margins, which is usually not the case, right? Like again, I sold bracelets that were on AliExpress for like a dollar and I could sell them for like 20 bucks, which is a ridiculous margin, right? But th there's other products out there that that do, like you, you can't walk away with margins like that as easily um, as you can with say like a fashion accessory because fashion is all perceived value. Why do you think people buy you know a Gucci backpack for two thousand five hundred dollars when you can buy like a Herschel backpack for like a hundred? Right? It's it's all perceived value even though cost is relatively um, the same. It's just it's again all perceived value. So um, that's that's why I like the fashion industries because you can basically charge whatever you want as long as you can prove that it's worth that much in their head. Okay, now. Uh, myth number four, inventory is not guaranteed. So that, that, again, that, that's just another myth where people are like, oh, if I drop ship the supplier, like they might not have, you know, all the inventory when I get sales, but I was like, just, 
just try to get sales first before you even worry about, oh, my supplier's not gonna have it. Like if you have already imported your product to your website, right? And you've already validated it, they have some inventory in there, okay? Which again, overload and all that, like they'll tell you if they have inventory, even AliExpress will tell you, okay? Then just worry about making sales. Once you make sales, that's where you actually contact the supplier and say, hey, I'm gonna be making you money. I need to make sure that you can actually fulfill on your end and keep your end of things in check so that we can both make more money, okay? Um, if they don't respond or they can't do that, most of the time, guys, there's other suppliers selling the same exact shit on AliExpress, okay? Now, the last myth. Drop shipping is too saturated. Now, this one, shout out to Max. I was, I was filling up my gas tank um, literally a few days ago, and um, this kid comes up to me, he's like, yo, you know, like I watch your YouTube videos, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, and then, um, so I was asking, you know, like, and this kid's a sophomore in high school, okay, so like, he, he's, a, he's a young gun on his way to make mills, but I asked him what he's trying to do online, and he's like, oh, I want to do what you do, but everyone told me not to do it because it's too saturated, and my response was, nothing's ever too saturated, change your angle, okay, what do I, what, what, what do I mean by that, so basically when, when I'm, when I'm, when, I, when I'm telling him that, right, what's going through my head is like, people think, oh, everyone's selling bracelets now, everyone's selling rings, everyone's selling this and this and this and this, and it's like, okay, everyone's selling it, but 99% of the people selling this shit, like, they aren't making, they aren't even passing 1K a day, they aren't even making 10K, like, there's, there's a few sharks in the space that are making a shit ton of money off these products every day, and then most of the people are trickling off, like, like, you know, some people can, you know, do 5K day, 1K day, like, but with, with certain products, right? But again, it's all about your angle, okay? So this is what I tell people. Like, if someone says, oh, this product's not selling anymore, it's like, well, it's because your marketing creative has stayed the same for the last three months. And although it worked those last three months, there's no guarantee it's going to keep working or your audience is already saturated from that particular angle and that offer. So what do you do? You just change the offer, change the angle of, of where you're going. So for example, um, uh, I'll, just, I'll use this one. So imagine you're selling a bracelet, right, for for $20, okay? And it was going good for the first three months and you're, you're getting consistent sales, whether it's influencers, paid ads, whatever it is, but then it starts to die off and you're like, oh shit, okay, what, what can I do? Rather than ditching the product, trying to find a whole new product, right, you already validated that people want the product. People are willing to give you their hard-earned money for that bracelet, okay? What can you do? You can change the offer. So instead of saying one bracelet for $20, there's a few other workarounds. You can offer like bundles. You can say, hey, I can give you three bracelets, okay, for $30 or something like that. Like, like just change the offer, guys. Change the angle of where you're going at it. Um, not, I'm not necessarily saying like to give a fat discount on everything because that's not, that's not going to be on par with, you know, some of the brands and, and the branding angles that, that some people are, are marketing towards, right? But just changing the overall marketing strategy, marketing angle of your offer, guys. That is where, um, that's 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 where basically basically where you win. Um, so guys, so again, dropshipping is not <laughs> not too saturated. If you look at stats online, if you look at everything, all of last year when every single guru was like, "I'm quitting dropshipping. Dropshipping's dead." Then, you know, <laughs> every, everyone was saying that. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I made a video was like, "Hey, am I quitting dropshipping?" You fuck no. Um, but if you look at the stats. From all these big corporations are looking at it just from last year sales on online in the online space and people coming online and figuring out what the internet is right that's supposed to double from last year so if you're asking me it's too saturated like there's literally like last year was whatever it was like imagine so forget that last year was like one point something billion then then this year's gonna be two point something billion. and that's literally double what was what was last year it, like fucking fucking quick maths so that's the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed just going over five little myths um, and kind of just breaking down a few things in those myths to hopefully give you guys some insight on some of that stuff. So, um, yeah, that's that's the video. I've got to get to plans now. So <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and drop a comment. I respond to everyone's comments, um, you know, the day or two after each video. Um, just because I, I saw some guy who was like, you don't comment on all videos. And the video was from like six months ago. I was like, well, six months ago. So... Hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to subscribe. And as always, a link in the description for everything. My social medias, uh, programs, free stuff, product lists, 69 products. Hope you guys enjoy. Catch you guys later. Shoot!